Dit is Pop Alpha 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag, 28 mei 2016. Dit is de bulletin van zaterdag. As usual, our weekend bulletins are in English. Today we have Morse code and also an SSTV image, which for this time is in PD90. If you are auto switching, however, you will be okay without changing anything. The reason for the larger size is that it is, is the first homebrew related SSTV picture we have in the daily minutes. Please send me more if you have any suggestions. As always, we will start now with the propagation report of the RSTB. This is GB2RS, the news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. Now for the radio propagation report compiled by G0KYA, G3YLA and G4BAO. This past week was more subtle geomagnetically, with the K index generally staying around 0 or 1. This was thanks to a lack of solar coronal hole activity and the associated high-speed solar wind streams. The solar flux index declined from the high to mid-90s as large sunspot 2546 rotated out of view. This has left a rather sparse-looking solar disk with only one sunspot group visible. As a result, the solar flux index is predicted to remain around 90 in the coming week. NOAA predicts the geomagnetic K index rising again to an unsettled 4 on Monday and Tuesday. Looking further ahead, it doesn't look good for next weekend's HFCW National Field Day, as plasma from a recurring coronal hole uh, could push the K index up to 5. This could see the HF bands becoming very noisy and maximum usable frequencies fall away. Apart from conditional short skip sporadic openings on 10 and 15, the highest money bands for field day is predicted to be 20 metres, with 15 metres perhaps struggling to open to DX. 40 metres may give consistent openings around Europe, with DX being workable at night. 80 metres may give good openings around Europe after dark, but it's unlikely to yield much DX. Now, the VHF and up propagation next week sees high pressure between Iceland and Scotland with low pressure over the near content, continent. This means a northeasterly flow of air from the North Sea. In the summer months, this can lead to extensive mist and fog along eastern coasts and give some good tropo conditions from East Anglia to Aberdeen and Lerwick. This type of tropo depends upon warm and moist air blowing off the continent and out across the cool North Sea to give longer DX paths to Denmark, for example. However, with the north-easterly winds, it usually means dry cool air gets folded into the mix, and I suspect we may be limited to paths up and down the east coast. Last week some saw some excellent sporadic E on 6 and 4 metres, conditions on Wednesday extended from Scandinavia round to the Balkans and central Mediterranean. For next week it's not a good sign as that there seems to be uh, a few, few suitably placed jet streams, often included with sporadic E formation. They are mostly located over Spain and Mediterranean, so a bit too far away. EME conditions will improve next week with increasing declination and the moon at perigee on Friday. And that's it for this week from the propagation team. On the 19th of May, antennas were erected and the VHF SDR turned on to inaugurate the VO1FN slash B transatlantic VHF digital beacon receiver site. This is a joint project, project sponsored in part by the Society of Newfoundland Radio Amateurs, Bacalieu Amateur Radio Club and Upper Trinity Amateur Radio Club. The VHF digital receive site is now operational and ready for experimentation by beacon operators and well-equipped VHF stations in Europe. The antennas to Innov Antenna 5 Element LFA Q High high-gain VHF Yagis can be rotated to point stations that are located in southern regions of Europe. An international space station radio contact has been planned for Jeff KD5TVQ, with participants at a school in Ontario in Canada. The event is scheduled for Monday the 30th of May at approximately 1901 UTC. The contact will be Telebridge contact, operated by IK1SLD in northern Italy. The downlink signal should be audible over parts of Europe. Interested parties are invited to listen in on 145.8 MHz, narrowband FM. 
The Dayton Hamvention is over for another year. About 25,000 visitors were at the show, including the RSGB president, Nick Henwood, G3RWF. He was interviewed along with Chip Margelli, K7JA, A71EZ of the Qatar Amateur Radio Society, and Vicky Mate, K8VGM of the 3905 Century Club, for the Amateur Radio Newsline report. Nigel, G3TXF will be at the helm of the Kosovo Amateur Radio Association Station Z60A during the CQWPXCW contest this weekend. The association is the newest international amateur radio union member society. The operation will be prepared for their debut as an official headquarters station for the IAIU HF Championship on the 9th and 10th of July when Z60A will operate from multiple stations around the country. A radio relic from the Second World War has just come out of the shadows. It's a wireless station just outside Norwich that operated in obscurity, its access hidden behind a fake bookcase. The station also had a nearby escape tunnel. Civilian volunteers were dispatched there to transmit and receive messages for the army, trading information to help ward off an invasion. The station, which finally came to public light in 2012, was recently granted heritage protection by Historic England. It's known as the Pine Bank Station, is located at Thorpe St Andrews near Norwich, one of three underground wireless stations similarly protected. Affiliated amateur radio clubs need to be getting together information together for the next RSGB yearbook and should recently have received a letter to this effect. Information such as contact details, meeting places, examination information is being collected. The deadline for submitting information on the club is the 6th of June. GB3WW and GB3WG have recently been repaired and upgraded. These are co-located at 370 metres ASL on a 180-foot mast above Port Talbot. GB3WG has changed frequency to RU70 wide split on 430.875 and 434.475 MHz with 94.8 Hz CTA CSS. The repeat keep, repeater keeper John GW4FOI would appreciate reports from any and all areas. IARU Region 1 has produced an updated VHF Manager's Handbook. All relevant decisions of the IARU Region 1 Conference 2014 in Varna, Bulgaria, have been taken into account, as well as recommendations proposed in the Vienna meeting 2016. A completely new version of the VHF Handbook will be published after the 2017 conference in Munich. To download your copy, go to www.iaiu-rfigure1.org. Beacon, uh, repeater keepers are reminded that their repeater insurance is now due. Those who have yet to renew should do so via the RSGB website. Renewals have been reduced to £10 per repeater call sign.
Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2 NOS en ochtends om half elf. Aanvullende informatie bij de uitzendingen is te vinden op www.pa0ete.nl. Wil verder gerust je tips, commentaar en desnoods prietpraten naar xapenstaartje xdv.me.